starting off with some mushies and kombucha. I was pretty close to having um, my crazy chocolate peanut butter brownies for breakfast, but <laughs> I was able to resist, and now I'm going to make a chocolate peanut butter smoothie instead. <laughs> Oops, I drank it too fast. It was too good. <laughs> chocolate peanut butter smoothie for breakfast. Okay, we got takeout from Veggie Nation. This is the tamale, which is my favorite thing in the whole entire world. And I got the salad that I always get with the beans and the rice and the yumminess. And that's it. Oh yeah, we may have gotten ice cream too to go. And some ice cream. Hey guys, sorry, that's such a short video. I didn't really have much clips from yesterday. My friend came into town and she's staying with me for a week. So I had a pretty busy day. We had just had a lot of things going on. Um, so I didn't really get to do too much. But what's cool is you can notice lately the shorter videos means less struggle for me. So usually when you see shorter videos, it means that I didn't struggle that much that day and I didn't have much to say, which is a good thing for me because then I, <clears throat> you know, I ate healthy usually. I think it's really nice to be able to go someplace and have takeout that's good enough. And I was just talking to my friend about this yesterday that I've noticed in the last few months since I did the 10 and 20 program, as long as I eat mostly vegan, like 95 to 100% vegan, the weight stays off normally anyways. But the point that is I have to, it can't be like super processed type vegan foods. Like it can't be all the salty, oily kind of stuff that you can get in packages. As long as much of my stuff I make from home, smoothies and soups and stuff like that. But then if I'm going to go off, I'll do like Whole Foods or I'll do a vegan place, like some type of restaurant or whatever. That makes it a little bit better for me as far as weight loss. Because I find it was true back in the day when I used to, gain weight very easily, it was because I would have, I would start to have a lot of pizza or cheese or real ice cream or, you know, things that were made of actual animal products, which happened to be more dense calorically versus nutrition. That's something to keep in mind um, that I've learned. If you have trouble maintaining your weight or losing weight, I think that it's just much easier to try to at least eat as much vegan as you can because there are some amazing tasting vegan foods out there, especially like at Whole Foods. If you like vegetables, if you like plant-based foods, Whole Foods makes them taste amazing. You can get a bunch of them all at once, um, or even places like, I know if you don't have a Whole Foods in your area, if there's a Trader Joe's, or if there's um, Jason's Deli, or Sweet Tomatoes, or um, I'm trying to think of some of the other places, but those are a couple of the places that I have relied on when traveling. Whole Foods is always great, of course. Of course, it's super expensive. But those other two places I find um, to be very helpful when you're kind of, you know, or a grocery store, of course, but they don't typically have a lot of prepared stuff that's vegan. It's just easier to go to a place that has like a salad bar or whatever. Only problem about places like Jason's or uh, Sweet Tomatoes. Sweet Tomatoes, for instance, they have so many foods that are not vegan. You can for sure make a really, really nice large salad with beans and nuts and seeds and you know maybe a little bit of salt because the seeds have nuts and seeds have some salt and oil or they're roasted or whatever it is but at least it's better than nothing but these kinds of places you have to be careful because it's kind of a um, like landmine area in there because there's like pizza over here there's bread over here there's creamy soups with you know uh, full fat cream and all that kind of stuff so they can be a little bit difficult to sort of navigate but if you can get you know, load it up on your plate, just tons of vegetables and tons of vegan type foods. Tofu is a really great option. In a lot of the times they make tofu in a way that tastes so good. Like I just got a teriyaki tofu today from Whole Foods and it was delicious. Um, they're not perfect foods. They usually have oil and salt, you know, that kind of stuff. But it's better than having a piece of steak or a chicken burger or something like that that just has a very dense amount of calories. You know, uh, having wraps instead of full buns or whatever. Just little things here and there, these little changes that make it a little bit easier to cut back on those calories without having to think about it too much. That way you don't have to like be counting calories, at least you're just making these little um, changes that will you know, ultimately end up to... <sighs> 
to be less calories in the long run. So that's just a little note I wanted to kind of talk about today that, um, and also I stretched out the video a little bit for you guys too. Now it's not a super short video, but I just was having this thought yesterday about why am I able to sort of stay at this weight? I've never been able to do this in my life before. Why is it kind of easy for me to stay at this considerably like a very low weight for me compared to where I've always been, always been over like, 135 or 140. I've been able to stay in the 120 range for months now with without much struggle. Like let's that's important to remember. Um, not like oh, I feel hungry all the time or I'm always having to count my calories or I have to be so conscious about what I'm eating. Like sure I struggle at times, but then I'll come back around and I'll eat less for a few days and then you know other days I'll eat more. But it sort of evens itself out and keeps my weight pretty consistent. Why? I think because of um, the focus on high nutrient foods, which automatically equals lower calories, I think that's really important. So instead of when you have a meal, instead of thinking, okay, um, what's my protein going to be? What's my carb going to be? What's my vegetable going to be? Whatever. Think of meals differently. Think of a meal as how am I going to get as many nutrients as possible with this meal? Like, okay, I want a wrap. Or, all right, I want some soup, or I want a stir fry, or, you know, I want some oatmeal for breakfast, or I want a smoothie. Every time you think of a type, and, and try to think along these lines of those types of meals, like soups, smoothies, um, stir fries, salads, these kinds of healthier, lower calorie meals. And don't think of um, what's the protein going to be in it or whatever, because you'll get automatically enough of that stuff as long as you vary your plant-based foods. But you think to yourself from the top down, what are the nutrients I'm going to get? What are the high nutrient foods in this that I'm going to get? Like when I went to the Whole Foods Hot Bar today, you'll see this video tomorrow. I was, as I, um, as I was thinking through what I was going to get, this is kind of how I work this. I always go to the bar and I think, okay, what is the highest nutrient food here? Is there kale? Is there a kale salad? Some type of roasted kale or uh, just a kale, massaged kale salad with some maybe some oil and salt or whatever, but is there a kale salad? What can make that sort of a big piece of what I'm doing? Then are there some beans, some nuts and seeds, things like this that, like beans for instance, you can have unlimited amounts of. Then you think, all right, can I have, uh, what kinds of vegetables could I top on this that are the really low calorie, high nutrient vegetables? Is there broccoli? Is there cabbage? Is there, and you sort of run through your mind, you know, what are the cruciferous vegetables? Are there any of those here? Can I add that? Then you go down the line. Can I have some, you know, lower nutrient, but still um, low calorie foods? Like you're going to go through like maybe some peas or something sweet like corn. And then you really get into the starchy stuff. Maybe I'll add a little bit of sweet potato. I'll add some butternut squash just for like a little treat. And then by the time you've gotten all those things in there from the whatever salad bar you're at or you're thinking of making a meal, a stir fry or something like that, once you've gotten all of those categories sort of ticked off, man, there's no more room for anything else. Honestly, if you're really working through all the categories and getting foods from each of those categories, categories, then it's hard to really fit in anything else. Because at this point, it's like, okay, I could add some rice, but I already have some starchy things, or I have a bunch of beans, that'll take the place of it. Maybe I'll add just a little, like a scoop full of rice or something. Usually that ends up doing it for me. Um, and then there's really no room for meat or anything like that, because you're like, oh, this is so much food anyways. If you actually then go and eat that whole salad or that stir fry or the smoothie or whatever with all those wonderful things in it, that's kind of, so anyways, I just want to sort of give, wow, that was a lot longer than I expected it to be. Um, but I wanted to sort of give that thought process that I've been having the last couple days with trying to get back on track, but realizing that I'm not going to be 100% nutritarian right now because I'm just not in the mind frame. But how can I be as good as possible? How can I try to at least within the parameters of eating crappy, <laughs> you know, how can I at least maximize this nutrition? And this is sort of a th thought process that I go through when actually whenever I make a meal. Sometimes I'm like, well, you know, I just want my chocolate peanut butter smoothie, but I'm going to put a ton of kale in it, you know, or that sort of a thing, you know, just thinking of trying to maximize the nutrient value when you create a meal and then eat it. So um, that's all I'm going to say about this topic. Thank you guys for sticking with me for the last week or so when I was off. I know that a lot of you go through the same exact thing. And then sometimes you can't get back on. I get that too. 
I have to say, um, along those lines, when I started this challenge, uh, the 10 and 20 challenge, guys, remember it was like three or four months ago, that day that I recorded the day one video for that challenge was perhaps exactly where you're at right now. That feeling of, oh my gosh, I just need something to get me out of this pattern of like ordering pizza or you know whatever it is like getting ice cream or getting all this crap at the store all the time you just get in these spirals and you can't stop yourself that's where I was when I started that challenge for me trying to get out of a funk like that typically it's either hormones I just have to wait for my hormones to switch and usually they do but if I'm stuck month after month after month and I can't get out usually what I end up doing is a challenge where I say okay for the next 10 days or the next 20 days or the next 42 days I am on it. And then I go through all my little tips about how to stick to it. And I'm going to put a link for that blog post down below, which explains all the tips that I do when I'm really on it to make myself stay focused and stay in the zone of whatever challenge I'm doing. I suggest that if you haven't done Furman's 10 and 20, the detox program yet, try that. Um, but you know, on the other hand, I when, I when I really get like off of my game, like for right now, you know, I've been wanting to do another challenge for a while, but I find that mentally I can't handle it. Like more than every six months or something like that. Like <laughs> I might want to do a challenge, and I actually have wanted to do another challenge since I finished this ten and twenty. But I'm just not motivated right now. Like I really have to be in the right mindset. Um, I think I've blabbed enough. That's what I wanted to say about like all of these forty-five different things. Thanks for listening. I'm gonna put some links down below. Let me know what you guys think about this um, this technique of at least thinking of the most high, like the highest nutrient foods that you can, even if you're in a place that's not great where you might have some oil or you might have some salt, or if it's just one meal per day, just try to do one meal per day that has some high nutrient foods in it at least, and then at least your body's getting some good stuff while it's processing out the bad as well. So um, that's all I'm gonna say for now. I'll see you guys later. Bye.